today's talk is going to be in reference to the class that we had earlier today with Roshi Word uh, going on uh, the platform Sutra Huinen, the Sixth Patriarch, and uh, something that we've been talking about for the past weeks uh, since we had the retreat, the long week retreat is uh, emptiness, Shunyara. And uh, Roshi, as usual, you know, gave us an enlightening talk on it. And, and it helped me because I, I, I noticed that the fact that we're here all the time and, and we have this practice that sort of becomes automatic. And, and concepts start forming again. We were talking about how we have to drop all concepts to understand, to go beyond our own understanding. And dropping the concepts gives you just, your concepts gives you an idea of where you've been at. So this morning when Roshi was talking, I just realized that the fact that things become so automatic, I had some concepts about things that we do here. And uh, we were talking about meditation and samadhi. You know, what is exactly samadhi? And, you know, as he mentioned it, this right concentration. It's just, you know, being able to, to be there, concentrate. And then the other samadhi, which is the one that you go into when the right concentration is when you're able to pay attention to everything and nothing in particular, just all of it, all around you. And that's when you hear noise, you hear it, but you're not particularly taken by, by anything, same thing with the thought. It comes, but you look at it and then it goes and then you keep paying attention to your surroundings. And then we went to Higgs, Roche explained about, you know, the other kind of samadhi day when you go into meditation, you just kind of forget about everything and you are there, but quite not there. It's just, you get lost into this emptiness. So it, it, I realized that, that the fact that, like I said, the fact that we have this automatic this practice that we try to get into, it becomes, it, it was for me kind of automatic. Is these things that I do and this and then they go and do this and all things became a process. And not that I don't pay attention, but I realized that they were actually, like I mentioned, becoming a concept. And then the moment I realized that they were a concept and I dropped them, it was something just stopped. So like my whole concept of everything, even of Buddhism, stopped. And then you're out of words. And I just realized that I had nothing to say, <laughs> nothing to ask. Because the moment I wanted to ask something, I had no words for it. It's a concept that I have. And understanding but I don't know how to put it into words so I guess I'll just have to wait and see what that leads me but the fact that I had no words for, for this feeling and or, or understanding that I had at that precise moment so it puts me to think so is this emptiness and what's beyond that so at what level do we stop being conscious or having consciousness or perceiving emptiness you know first it's a thought about emptiness you know that you think about it and then you we understand what we heard about it so we say okay this is emptiness not thinking. But then how do you explain on thinking? How do you put it into words? So we go into the uh, 
I would say the uh, Buddha mind, I guess, which is something that you, there's no words for it. How can you explain it? And 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 he goes. And I go back into the experience that I had here with Roshi when he, I think I explained it in the past, when he just, Mudita asked him what Mu was, and Roshi just did this, and he didn't say any, anything, I didn't say anything, Mudita didn't say anything. And just by the fact that Roshi moved his hand, something, I understood something that I could not put into words, and it took me months to process it, to understand that it was, I guess, some level, some a small level of enlightenment, just understanding what emptying it is. And I think when I was trying to understand it, understand it, all the, the only thing that came to my mind was the Nike motto, just do it. <laughs> that was, that was, that was, how I understood through through when I would I try to put it into words. How do how do you put something that you have no words for it and try to explain it to someone? So even though we might talk and read books and sutras and and uh, meditate, the moment we open our mouth and try to explain something, we already we're wrong already. We failed at it. So that's why, rather than trying to explain things, it's better that we just wait for it and not try to search for things. Like, for instance, enlightenment. Someone brought it up to me a few days ago. So do you search for enlightenment? Well, certainly you search for it. You're not going to find it because you are actually setting yourself to search for it. Instead of just sitting and, and realize it. Instead of going after it, you just realize, you just wait for it and realize, and that's what meditation does. You sit there and, and this morning when Roshi mentioned about Shikantasa, and yes, how powerful it is. And I realized that, that uh, uh, how I've been going back into Shikantaza and counting my breath and experimenting with it. And when he mentioned that Shikantaza, it just like hit me. Yeah, it's so powerful. Why? Because you pay attention to everything and nothing in particular. So just just seeing that 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 Shikantaza is really the 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 one of the ways to to realize to have this realization that that what you are and you're looking for it's already there and just a matter of observing it and and the fact that we cannot realize it and Roshi mentioned it speaking about the sutra that we're reading it's a conditioned mind that doesn't let you realize because you know, our mind is, 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 is uh, uh, shattered into so many directions throughout the day. Every single thing that we do puts our attention into that. So the more we do, you, our mind just, you know, gets split into so many parts that the moment you try to focus into one thing, it's impossible because your mind is just all over the place. And instead of trying to concentrate on it and say I'm gonna concentrate on this one thing you just drop all the not concept but the uh, fact that you have your mind uh, in so many things and instead of trying to f fight yourself and get concentration you just sit back and just stop trying to concentrate that's what brings your mind together that's what gives you some sort of a, a, a release that, that it gives you that being in the moment, like Roshi said, being in the zone, what they call it now. But it gives you that, that, that uh, uh, moment of peace throughout the day, just 
uh, sitting there and kind of balance yourself. Think about, I don't know, just breathing and sitting back and let things flow. That's what I, I've, been, I've been doing, you know, uh, with what I do throughout the day. I realize that even if at 10.30 in the morning I got a million things to do, it's just still 5 till 10, it's 10.25, so I got five minutes. And those five minutes, I just take advantage of the fact that, that I got these five minutes before things start going. So the fact that I get these five minutes and just pay attention to them and just let it be, let it be whatever. I know, I know that at 10.30, things are gonna go crazy. So I just empty my concepts of what things are gonna be like and just let them be. And of course, it comes the stress of getting things done, which is different from the stress of being afraid of things not getting done. So if you step back and say, okay, things are gonna get done, and they're gonna be okay whether they're done or not. Of course, you wanna, I wanna go into it into work, saying or thinking that things are gonna get done. But don't stress before things start. So those five minutes give me this freedom to just prepare for the day. And then uh, I realized that, that even things might go hectic, but in the middle of it, somehow this little thought creeps in and says, hey, things are gonna be okay. The boss might be mad, but when, what else can you do? You try your best to get things done. They get done, if they don't, then and, and, and not stress about it before, even before. So, just, just that, that concept of, mm -hmm. of chicken tassa, I, I, the moment which you mentioned it, I, I started just putting together all the things that I've been doing, and it's like, yes, you know, I've been feeling a lot more relieved when it comes to doing so many things, and just being there, just, just doing them before I start doing them, just like know that they're gonna be done. If they get done, if they don't get done, they don't get done. It doesn't mean that I'm being irresponsible. It just, I'm being responsible for the outcome of it. Might get done or might not get done, but I'm responsible for it. And that gives me a sense of completeness being complete with whatever it is. And, and it just, you know, just this, just like the moment we had this morning to, to this moment, I've been realizing, you know, that that's just, just, that's been the way I've been able to manage myself better throughout the day. And actually get more things accomplished. Because the fact that my mind is not shattered in a thousand things that I have to go through the day, I'm able to do them all because I let go of the concept and just get there and get it done, not thinking about how long it's gonna take, if it's gonna come out right or, or none of that. Just get in there and get it done. So it's just, a, 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 I guess it's an applied form of emptiness, of shunyata, just letting go of things and uh, uh, you know, if, if, if we could bring this throughout the day, not just with work, but with everything, you know, with life, with the, your family, your loved ones, whatever it is that you're dealing with. Uh, just being there and, and, and letting go of all the concepts about the thing itself or the action that, ye, that needs to be taken or our view, or you hold the concept that you might have about everything, not just work or a, a specific thing, but you, the whole concept about life. And, and I just see that the tremendous 
liberation that there's in, in just just being there. And like I say, it doesn't mean that that we're just gonna let go and be free and you know not taking care of things, but just being responsible for what we do. But through this uh, 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 emptiness, through letting go, truly letting go of things, and and just be responsible for the outcome, whatever it is. And if things get done, it's good. If things don't get done, it's still good. Because ultimately, it's it's what you, how you respond to things. Like I said, it's not that things get done or not, resolved or not. It's how you react, how you perceive, and be okay with it. Be okay with it, and even if you're not okay because things didn't get done, just being okay with the fact that they didn't get done and you're not happy, just being okay with the fact that you're not happy. And then it just, you know, it, again, it, where does consciousness stop? So we just supply that. Okay, I'm not happy. Well, you're not happy, of course. And then the moment you're okay with the fact that you're not happy, you're going to stop being unhappy. <laughs> so it, it, this, it could be applied to anything. It could be applied to anything that you are, you know, things might, like I was mentioning yesterday, life is never going to stop. Life is like one of those baseball machines that keep throwing balls at you. And you put an automatic, it's going to throw a, a a ball every so many seconds or minutes, and that's life. It's never going to stop throwing a curve at you, and it's just going to keep throwing things at you all the time, all the time. So is it good, is it bad? You might say at one moment, I used life, please stop it, you know, I can't take it anymore. But if you choose what happens to you, if you choose, okay, I know that I, I have another one coming at me, another ball you're going to stop being the victim. It's just, the only, the only reason why we feel big victims is because we feel that somewhat we're not in control. And it's not that you need to be in control. You just need to accept what comes at you. Whatever situation comes at you, if you choose it, it stops being a situation. If you choose whatever it is, I guess it, it's, it's a way of, of tricking or twisting the arm of fate. And you say, okay, this is what's going to happen to you. And if you choose it, you own it. It's yours. You're responsible for it. And, and I guess having that sense of responsibility for what happens in your life gives you gives you a, a peace, knowing that you're not a victim, and that's the power that you have within you. The power that you have to choose, whatever it is. Like I say, life is never going to stop. It's always going to be something. When you think you you are going to get a rest or oh that's it, I made it. Guess what? Boom, it comes again. So it's just choosing, just choosing what comes at you and uh, just being mindful, <clears throat> being mindful of, 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 uh, of whatever comes at you and then just having that peace at a moment that will give you the clarity of mind to, net, to know that that moment when everything's coming at you and you're feeling desperate and you don't know what to do, just Taking, it'll take one second, and just choosing it, you'll just, you know, I guess, uh, 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 again, it'll be a form of, of uh, emptiness, not, not letting things come at you and, and take you with it, just letting go and, and, and be with it. <clears throat>